This here is the Techlast P10. It's a 99 US Android 7.1 tablet. It has an octa-core, two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. So is it any good, such a cheap budget tablet here? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. I'll go through some benchmarks, a little bit of gaming, general use, and my overall opinion. Now, since I got this one here from Banggood, I don't have the original box. They've shipped it in this polystyrene box here. So you get the tablet in this little plastic sleeve. You get some instruction manuals, micro USB 2 cable, and then depending on what region you're in, I got an EU charger here, which is five volts, two amps. The P10 also comes with this pre-applied screen protector, so no, it does not have scratch-resistant glass. Weighs just 543 grams, and it's 8.7 millimeters thick. So for port, starting from the right here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, micro SD card reader that supports up to 128 gigabytes, tested. Then we've got a micro USB 2 port for data and charging. Now to charge this, it takes approximately three hours, just over three hours to fully charge the battery. Then there's DC in, but they do not include that. That's five volts, two amps, and then the loudspeaker. And on the left, the other loudspeaker we have. So we've got two of them for decent stereo separation. So along the top, we've got the plastic volume and power buttons. Now the feel of them is okay. They're not loose, they don't rattle. Hopefully they will stand the test of time there. And then we have a reset button. And this part along the top here, that's all made out of plastic here. That's for the wireless and Bluetooth reception. And then finally, a front-facing 2 megapixel camera. Now, the rear of the tablet is made out of this metal. It's, so it's a unibody, the whole thing. It's well done. And really, I feel for the price, the build quality is good. It's quite solid. There's no flex in it whatsoever. And we do have a rear 2 megapixel camera you can see there. So the screen is an IPS panel, it's 1920 by 1200 resolution. Maximum brightness is 280 lux. Now it's non-laminated, so we do have a gap between the digitizer glass and then the IPS panel below of approximately two millimeters, which is one of the larger gaps you will find. Colors overall, decent. Blacks aren't that deep because it isn't fully laminated. So it's running Android 7.1.2, which isn't the latest version, but it's good to see because there's still a lot of tablets that come out with this price range that are running Android 6 or even Android 5.1. Now I've left the bloatware here so you can see it. You can see we've got about approximately five or six bloatware applications, but the good thing about them is they can be uninstalled and removed. And then you're left with a basic stock Android and launcher. Now there is an over there update system and I have already received one update. So that's good to see that TechLast are at least pushing out updates. But don't ever expect this tablet to get Android 8. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Certainly not in this price range. Now you will see now and then there's some animation stutter. And I believe that that is probably caused by the fact that we've only got 2 gigabytes of RAM. And it's not exactly a super powerful chipset that's powering this. Using Google Play here is a perfect example to show you the kind of speed that you can expect from this tablet that it will now and then be a little bit stuttery. The same goes for web browsing performance. Now, because it does run Android 7, you can do split screen on apps that support it, which is good to see. But it can be a little slow, you can see there, a little bit of lag, not exactly the fastest. And I'll run Chrome here too, just to demonstrate that this is no speed demon of a tablet that there is a little bit of stutter. It does need sometimes a little bit of time to catch up. And the touch response as a result isn't super fluid. Now to the guy that asked me, does it run Netflix? Will it run it? Well, you can search it, but it doesn't show up. So that to me means that this tablet is not supported. But other streaming services like, for example, Amazon Prime Video that I do have installed, this actually runs quite well. PDFs and eBooks, they actually look surprisingly good on the screen and the performance isn't too bad if you don't expect a lot. For example, right now, it does take a little while, this is over wireless, for it to load in large heavy images on this large PDF file I'm testing. Now taking a look at the performance, this is the Antutu score, so 41,000, that's not breaking any records there. You can see the CPU does all right, but where the weaknesses of this particular model is the RAM speed there and the 3D as well is not a particularly high score. Now when you look at the internal storage, the EMMC that it has on here, uh, rather slow sequential write speeds there, 19 megabytes per second, 
and the 4K writes as well. So very slow, the spec of drive they've used on this. But that's to be expected for this price range. They've had to have cut some corners with the full metal build, the IPS panel, and then on to wireless speeds. So they do advertise it having dual band wireless in, but I couldn't get on to the five gigahertz band, at least on my router here. And these were the maximum speeds that I managed to push through this on wireless in. So not particularly fast. Now the range of it, it seems okay because we do have that plastic there on the back for the antenna reception. And then when it comes to battery life, in my testing here, I managed to get close to five hours with 22% battery left. And half of that time was actually gaming. So I do believe you're able to get about six to seven hours on this, depending on your use, which isn't too bad. Ideally, I'd like to see more, of course. And here you can see my screen on time there of almost five hours. Now this was continuous use, by the way. So the P10 can stream YouTube 1080p perfectly fine. The wireless keeps up with that. And it's the maximum setting we can get on this, so you can't go any higher than that. That's all it lets us go with, quality 1080p. Perfectly fine there. And I'll give you a sample of those twin speakers. As I showed you in the start, we've got one on the left, one on the right. So what about fan noise? So as you can hear from that, the speakers have a decent amount of volume to them. They're not quality speakers. There is like a continual hiss at low volume that I can hear coming from those speakers. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack also has a tiny bit of interference and static on there. Now, depending on how fussy you are, whether that's gonna bother you or not. Now, when it comes to sensors, it has the bare minimum. You can see we've just got a gravity sensor, also known as a accelerometer. And that is it, so no gyroscope, no GPS, no compass, not on a 99 US tablet. So what about gaming performance? So this is Marvel's Conquest of Champions, and you can see it definitely does have a few stutters. But overall, this game, at least, is playable. And Modern Combat here is playable. Now it is using the lowest visual settings, you can tell, but at least it does have playable frame rates. It just doesn't look wonderful, that's all. And this title here is another one that's running on the Unreal Engine, it's Mortal Kombat X. And you can see, while the frame rate's not the smoothest, it's certainly playable, which is the main thing. So that's good at least. And even more demanding titles here like Heroes of Incredible Tales, playable, but you do see there's quite a few stutters in the beginning at least. Like just then, quite a pause. But good to see this tablet's able to run the game. So having a look at video playback now, I'm playing a 4K file here. This is H.264 codec and it plays it pretty slow there. You can see it's running about 20 frames per second instead of 30. So ideally you want to play only 1080p max files on here. Now it does not seem to support HEVC codec, the latest one, at least not in the native gallery player here. You need to install something like MX player for it at least to be playable, but I noticed that the frame rate was really choppy. So it's best to stick to 1080p files and older kind of codecs, not the latest ones, because it will struggle with them. So to wrap up, this 99 US tablet does offer quite a lot for the price, considering you're getting a full metal unibody build. You've got a 1920 by 1200 IPS screen with decent brightness to it. Now the speakers are quite loud, but they are flat. There is some static over them and a little bit of static and interference over the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You've got a stock Android ROM with some bloatware on that that can be uninstalled. Play Store, of course, is there. Android 7, so it's a recent version. You're not stuck on Android 5.1 or 6, but don't expect to see this tablet ever getting Android 8, at least not through the official channels from TechLast. Now, there are a few cons to it. that The performance isn't amazing, so you're going to see some stutters in use. If you start to multitask and quite heavily, then you will see some slowdown there. But what surprised me is it actually turned out to be decent enough to play games like you can see here in the background, Hit, that's running perfectly fine. There will be a couple of little stutters, 
that all of the games I tested did have playable frame rates. Battery life is reasonably good as well. You can get between six and seven hours out of this, so that's okay. And it is a little slow to charge around three hours, but overall again, you have to look at the price for 99 US. I feel that this is a decent tablet. Now, if you want better performance, have a look at something like Techlast's Master T8. Check out my review of that. And I will also be reviewing soon the 8.9 inch Techlast Master T8. So look out in my channel for that up and coming review. And thank you so much for watching this video.